Hi and welcome back to my playthrough of Eldritch Horror. I really, really, really do appreciate all the awesome comments out there. I really didn't expect that level of interest in me playing Eldritch Horror on camera again. Thanks so much for all your likes, for all your cool comments and especially making me aware of my goofs. I believe I only did one or I forgot one special ability of Gloria Goldberg. You and other investigators on your space roll on additional die when resolving other world encounters. Luckily it didn't have any impact on the gameplay whatsoever because she was a star simply amazingly um, closed that gate in London. So no harm was done. That's at least something. In respect to my strategy, I still don't know what I'm doing here. I still have a plan, but I'm not sure if that's a good plan. But we will see about that. I will not change the lead investigator. So for now, I will leave it with Gloria. And again, her problem is she got cursed during that last Mythos card. And yeah, you know, being cursed definitely sucks. In theory, I would have considered to gain a focus. Oh, she still has her focus token with her, right? Yeah, I think she has. So she may not need a focus action. So I really want to use the holy water now to get rid of that curse here. Because again, you can basically, when you get blessed, you can then instead um, get rid of a curse. Um, and I think for her second action, she's going to rest because she needs to stay there. We want that clue. I think that much is clear. So yeah, I think this card, this card, this will be her first action to choose an investigator on your space to gain a blessed condition. She's getting a blessed condition, which means if you would gain blessed condition, this card, this card instead. So let's simply do that. Nicely done. So we have taken good care of that holy water, which was, I think, one of the um, starting positions we got because of our prelude card. So I think overall that was definitely helpful after all. And then again, with her second action, hmm, she's going to heal. Yeah, I think we really have to heal a little bit. So let's just go now to do. We are getting rid of that wound. I think there's nothing that keeps me from being healed, right? No, I think she's okay. But that was already, or oh, those were already her two actions. For Tony, it will be similarly boring. Because I really thought about this for quite some time. Should I move him out? Um, whatever, doing stuff here. But because there are no real, um, let's say, helpful assets down here in the reserve, um, at least not really particularly helpful for me, I think really getting him out there doing stuff, yeah, I think it's, it's of no use. And again, moving him back in here, he would lose some sanity. He would get delayed, which might not be the worst thing in the world if that would have been his second action, for example. Also, great advice um, from you guys out there. Appreciate that a lot. And yeah, I think overall, I in the end decided to leave him where he is. So again, with one of his actions, he's going for a focus action. And yeah, with a second action, he's going to heal. So he's down to only one wound, which is something he can live with. And I think that's already it. I know it's pretty lame, guys, but also helps me speed up the gameplay <laughs> to some extent. So yeah, let's move into the encounter phase. And again, the whole plan was to go for this clue because it's really a dead end here. So whenever we are moving out, we don't have any more reasons moving back in. Also because of that Eldritch token up there. So I guess in this case, yeah, let's do that. So we are going for a research encounter. It's still a C space. So let's see what we get here. And this can't be a good one, right? In your dream, you've become a deep one. Oh, and here Cthulhu in your head. If you have a dark pack condition, this can't be true. Okay. Oh no, maybe in this case. No, in this case it's good. Okay. You lose three health and three sanity. Okay, we don't have that. Okay, in this case it's the other way around. You try to focus on hearing Cthulhu's message. Oh, wheel minus two. Oh gosh, she has a three. So she's also only rolling one die now. So that's quite terrible. Um, we have some dice. Okay, let's see about that. And... Whoa! <laughs> yeah! She really is a star. And it says here, if you pass, gain this clue. Cool. And another clue. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, that's really cool. This was helpful. Now she is back. 
to three clues and if you remember correctly her mythos codex here allows her to spend three clues to advance the current mystery by one of course we still need clues not to lose the game because of that rumor card up there web between worlds but right now there are still three eldritch tokens on it so i allowed myself a little mulligan there if you remember so I think there is still some time and again it only triggers when we have that reckoning not all of those cards have a reckoning and I think there is still a yellow and a more blue card so it's very likely 50% chance that um, with our next mythos card we will see uh, another rumor appearing which could be exactly as bad as this one or even worse I don't know but that was a very successful encounter phase for Gloria now but it's even more important now for Tony Morgan who is down here and yeah has to deal with that really risen um special encounter here and i see a strength symbol here that's at least gives me some hope as you approach the uncharted island you hear the sound of a cannon and feel the deck shudder your ship is badly damaged and if you hope to survive you must overpower the crew aboard the gunship alert the source of the cannon fire okay a strength test minus one so at least he's allowed to roll two dice now but let's see if that's enough or not okay and yes okay that's a six i take that so we can go into the um basically how is it called the success effect once you have control of the ship you find that it was filled with cultists devoted to cthulhu oh, what a surprise you search through the notes of in for information about the island okay that's an observation test of four minus one so three dice is he allowed to roll so let's really hope for the best now and yes 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 you did it you're also a star perfect if you pass you find a folder with everything you need to know place one eldritch token on the active mystery yes finally that's so cool it's so cool so let me do that real quick we place it basically beside it and what does it say at the end of the missile phase if there are eldritch tokens on this card equal to half the investigators solve this mystery so at the end of the mystery phase we have solved basically one third of the game that was amazing great job tony but of course next we have to deal with our uh, mythos card this was the encounter phase yep it was and yeah it's another blue one which means another rumor appears or is rather in the air a wax doll sits on the table next to your bed crude strips of fabric make it clear that the doll represents you and a lock of your own hair is tied around the figure okay it's a voodoo curse so we are spawning one clue and that goes to space number four up there north america or canada i guess and okay as an encounter that's an icing one i think that seems to be an easy one okay that's that seems to balance things out a little bit as an encounter an investigator on space six okay i will do that space six. Oh, it's also here in north america that's okay uh may attempt to undo the magic which binds him to the voodoo doll he may spend clues equal to half the investigator to solve this rumor so we need one and as in reckoning an investigator that does not have a bane condition gains a bane condition oh that's bad so we could get cursed both actually i think there are also other bane conditions now um other than um curse i think this haunted is a bane but she is haunted already she has a bane but yeah i think the next one yeah we will see we will see cool stuff the thing is i don't know if i get there in time i mean she's one two three spaces away so she needs two turns to get there and i think this is still her research encounter actually let's remove that and yeah three i mean yeah she needs two i mean she has still has her ship token so it can go to arkham and then maybe next could go there but i think we have to deal with that because otherwise tony could get cursed but okay, uh, we have our rumors out now, so no additional rumors will appear throughout this game. That's how the, the deck is staged. And I think most of the ancient ones have this same thing, that rumors typically only appear during stage one. There could be others, I don't know them all by, by heart, but I think that's the case. Okay, I think that wasn't terrible at all. We can now deal with our mystery, because it's now the end of the mythos phase. So this one has been dead 
dealt with. I put it next to Cthulhu and then we are drawing our next mystery card. And here we have the Deep Ones attack. Terrible storms have battered fishing villages across the globe, but it's merely the prelude to an invading army of Deep Ones. When this card enters play, each investigator places one Eldritch token on the nearest sea space that does not contain an Eldritch token. Okay, I will do that in a second. As an encounter investigator on a space containing an Eldritch token, they are both right now on tokens with Eldritch or with Eldritch tokens. May attempt to fend off the Deep One invasion. A Deep One monster ambushes him. If he defeats it, he spent one clue to place that Eldritch token on this card. Okay, cool. At the end of the Mythos phase, if there are Eldritch tokens on this card equal to the investigator, so we basically need two attacks. Do not discard the Eldritch token from the game board, so they will still remain there, whatever there is. Okay, um, we need two attacks. Problem is, yeah, in theory, this needs to be Tony. We don't have any weapons now. And let's have a quick look at the deep ones just to see what they have. Okay, toughness of two. Okay, we have not spawned one. That's the one we set aside for Cthulhu as part of his setup. Um, horror check of two. One, I think they are beatable, um, at least for someone who is a little bit more worse than Gloria, but she doesn't have any weapons whatsoever. I think we really need some spells for her and really at least one weapon for Tony. I think this needs to be our plan. And then we are moving into the next round. We will leave the lead investigator with Gloria. Right now there is no immediate reason. I think we have to get rid of that question mark down there too. I mean, she could stay there. Oh no, I have to still spawn those Eldritch tokens, right? Oh, I nearly forgot that. So he, I think, needs to do it here or there. Does it matter which one? Does it matter? I mean, here's the expedition. This could be tempting. So if we're moving down here, we have the active expedition. And you can find very useful stuff down there. So let's put it here, actually. And for Gloria, I think she doesn't really have a choice. The nearest one should be one, two, three. That's the nearest. Yeah, I think so. So this needs to go in here. But again, they could stay where they are and try to attack those deep ones immediately. And maybe that's something to consider for Tony, actually. I mean, he's on a space. And whenever we are moving onto a space with a token here, we are pretty much losing the rest of this turn then might also not be the end of the world actually ha 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 but still for gloria i am thinking to move her to arkham because she could gain as a bonus or as a reward for that encounter they gain some incantation spells of course getting some clues also not the worst because she needs clues and in theory, she could progress the current mystery with her Mythos Codex. But I think we want to wait until we have one of those tokens on there. So if Tony is successful, yeah, yeah, I think I think that's cool. Um, so she's moving one, two spaces over here to Arkham. Therefore, she has to spend her ship token, which she also got as part of the prelude. I think we have now gotten rid of everything there. She still has an action. She could heal, but I think in this case we also want to maybe go for um, acquire asset action because there are some useful items for her down there. So yeah, let's do that. And right now I'm considering to go for the magic shop, but let's see what she's rolling. She needs two successes. She's okay. She rolls three dice for influence. I mean, that's something, but let's see. Okay, that's one. In theory, she could now get rid of her focus token, but she could also go for a bank loan. I mean, that's a chance. Does she need it? Let's spend the focus first. I mean, let's spend the focus. Let's not go too crazy in here. Let's hope for one more success. Yes, so cool. She is really so cool. So yes, she is going for that magic shop which is a service when you gain this card which you just got immediately gain two spells then this card one spell and this this card okay here are the two spells arcane insight and the clairvoyance 
During the encounter phase, you may test lore. If you pass, you may choose to encounter a glue as if you're on its space, ignoring monsters on that space. Mmm, that's not bad. And the ritual here, the arcane insight, choose yourself or another investigator on any space and test lore minus two. That's not so great for her. What one to do for each tome? If you pass, that investigator gains a clue. That's also pretty powerful. I think we will go with the arcane insight for now even though it's much tougher for here. Of course, we still have to flip the card, but I like this one better for now. It's not great. I really was hoping for a combat spell or so wither or so. But OK, we have to get rid of this thing. But this also means uh, we are renewing this lavish feast. This doesn't seem to be great. When you gain this card, yeah, I recover two health and two sanity. It's not bad. Don't get me wrong. But again, I was really hoping for some weaponry, which I didn't get, obviously. OK, but this was her action. I mean, she still has a spell now, which might be something. Problem is, what am I going to do with Tony now? Of course, Tony is here on a space with an Eldritch Turk, so he could remain there. Problem is he doesn't have a clue token and you need clue. So you need to first beat that deep one and then you still have to spend the clue to place that Eldritch token on that card. So right now remaining here doesn't help him. So I guess he is moving out because there's really nothing else he could do there, right? Oh, wait. Oh, wait. OK, no, 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 no. I nearly forgot his special action here. Test influence, only a two. But if you pass, you may spend up to two focus to gain one clue for each focus spent. So he could generate that clue that he needs. Okay, that changes things dramatically. So for his first action, he is definitely going for a focus just to have one. And then he's going to go for this action here. So he is allowed, can you see that? Yeah, to roll two dice. And yeah, we basically only need one success. Come on, you can do that. OK, we have to reroll that. That's yes. And it's a five again. OK, what's good comes back always. Cool. OK, uh, you may spend up to two focus to gain one clue for each focus spent. I think I want to hold on to that because I can still use that focus here for that ability. So I think that will be an auto success, actually. Cool. So we are spending this focus only one which gives us a clue. I take that. Um, but I believe those were both of his actions. For the first, he got this one. And then for the second, he got this one. OK, I think that was actually very helpful. Wow, that was insanely good, actually. So we are moving into the encounter phase again. Gloria goes first. And I believe this is the very first normal encounter we are seeing in this game. You must be kidding me. OK, she's in Arkham. So let's see what she finds. Inside the old magic shop, Miriam Beecher talks to you about the finer points of the occult. OK, we are going for a lore test. And again, those are the cards which I don't read more. So I really haven't looked. Uh, OK, that was a pass. And this says, if you pass, you impress her with your acumen and she gives you a rare text. Gain one incantation spell. Cool stuff. And this was the first incantation spell I got basically from the bottom of the stack. And that's the Storm of Spirits, which says when resolving a combat encounter, you may resolve a lore test in place of the strength test using the same test modifier. Oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. That's, I think, something we need. Basically, we have increased her combat abilities from one die to three dice. I think that's definitely helpful. Cool. Then we are moving into the encounter phase of Tony. He is on a space containing an Eldritch token. Yes, that didn't spawn as part of that card here. But again, I it's an Eldritch token on a space, so we can use it. It came, I think, from that reckoning effect from one of the Mythos cards earlier. And may intend to fend off the Deep One Ration. Deep One monster ambushes him. If it defeats it, he may spend one clue to place that Eldritch token on this card. Yeah, let's do that. Again, he's over here. We have to go through the horror test before. I think there's nothing we can do about that or against that. 
think I have to zoom out a little bit more. Apologies for that. I don't typically do that while I'm shooting. His will test is a two. Yeah, he needs basically two successes not to take any sanity hit. But okay, he still that's one. That's fine. He still takes one hit, but I think he can deal with that maybe he will go for a rest action and now we are doing this test here it's a strength test minus one so he could now either roll two dice or he could basically use his can cuffs here piece before resolving the strength test during a combat encounter you may spend one focus to defeat that monster if it has toughness two or less and that's exactly what this monster has and i think in this case i really don't want to take any chances so i'm using my handcuffs on that monster and it is defeated it's really defeated so i still get the reward accordingly um, because we just defeated that deep one on that Eldritch token, we have to spend our clue. And this allows us to place that Eldritch token next to the card here, right? If he defeats it, he may spend one clue to place that Eldritch token on this card. And that's exactly what he did. Amazing job. Really well done, Tony. And now I really begin to understand how powerful his abilities are. Really, this ability to generate clue tokens i think that's really insane i believe this was an amazing round the problem is we have to draw our next card and this needs to be a yellow one um because we are now through our initial stage one of the deck and yeah the end is nigh again this can't be good I already see the tentacles here on a yellow card. This must be devastating. Let's go through this here first. Um, I think I will read that. Each of us have one item possession, ally asset, one task asset, and one improvement token, one focus, and one clue. That each of us loses one health and one sanity. Yeah, I think that's pretty brutal. Yeah, Tony is losing his handcuffs. I'm really happy I used them now, but yeah, that's really a brutal one. Oh, and we are now we are losing the Mythos Codex too. Okay, that's a brutal card. But okay, we will start with the Omen here. So we are moving from blue to red. We currently have a red gate in the heart of Africa, which means we have to advance Doom. Next, we are triggering the Reckoning effects. I believe we start with the Ancient One, Cthulhu. No, it's actually the monsters first world. We don't have any monsters on the board that have a Reckoning effect. And then... Um, each investigator on the sea space that does not contain an Eldritch token places an Eldritch token on this space. Yeah, Tony still is on that space. And again, that might not be the end of the world. Actually, this might be pretty good. So we are placing it next to him. So he could remain there and pretty much could be doing the very or a very similar thing next round. Okay, that's it's so tempting. Um, and I think... No, that's that for Cthulhu. And I guess then we are going already through... No, the Mythos cards, of course. Yeah, that's bad. So we have two rumors here. Discard one Eldritch token from this card unless investigators as a group spend clues equal to half. The thing is, I was going to keep my clue tokens, but because I know I have to get rid of an item possession, she only has one item, she's losing that Mythos code. Well, right now, there is no reason not to spend that clue for her um, in order not to um, take anything down here. Uh, here an investigator that does not have a Bane condition gains one Bane condition. And right now that's unfortunately Tony Morgan. So I'm drawing the bottom most um, card. And indeed it's not a curse, it's a blight. And this one says, when you gain this card, discard one ally asset. We don't have any ally assets. Um, and when they trigger the allies you surround yourself with, act erratically and without cause. Okay, flip this card. So he might not get into the ally business. But apart from that, that is okay. I believe in the base game, there were only curses in the Bane deck. Let's put it like this. But in this case, yeah, we have more than just curses. And again, I shuffle this deck well. I'm drawing from the bottom of the deck. I'm really not cheating here, guys. You simply have to believe me. But it's still bad enough, but not terrible at this point in time for him. Then we are triggering our reckonings of the conditions and possessions. So in this case, we will go with the haunted one and a one, two, three, something 
terrible will happen. No, she basically gets the board. We already know that. Yeah, it's a three. Exactly. We will flip this over. Um, we will lose one health and we will impasse strength. We cannot impasse strength any further. So again, that's really not the worst haunted condition to have, at least for her. And then we have the blight condition, which I believe is triggering in the very same round we got it because we got it before um, we got into that a phase of that that there is a reason why we're doing these things in order and yeah flip this card right yeah there's nothing to roll good thing is he doesn't have any allies so let's see and this one says obsessive greed whenever your valuables go missing it is clear who took them resolve one of the effect of your choice discard one item possession then flip this card discard all of your possession and impair then discard this card okay this will keep going no matter if we have allies or not that's a bonus uh basically losing that ally no matter what i mean it doesn't really say if you don't have any allies i mean we are still i mean you have to thematically think about we are not really alone we always have some folks around us and these guys are now obviously um obsessively greedy yeah discard one item position i think we can discard this item position because we will lose it anyway but really discard all of your possessions and impair and then boy, this is so bad i mean this is so cool these are really you must be these things are bad i mean maybe should have gone for a curse and be gone with it but yeah i drew this one so yeah we have to get rid of those handcuffs because we will lose those anyway i mean no reason not to do that and then we have to flip this card so they will keep coming back i believe those were all of our reckoning effects i really hope i have messed things up at some point in time this game really gets difficult to manage but i think i'm okay no i think i'm okay so we are spawning a gate so we don't no longer know what this gate is and here we have one in tokyo that's a blue one and the next omen will be blue i'm not sure if i will be able to close that actually so we are spawning a gate there of course this means we also have to bring in another monster and in this case we have a buyer keep oops and those are definitely more nasty than the average cultist yeah toughness of two that's solvable if you defeat this monster during a combat encounter you may lose one sanity and move three spaces instead of resolving another encounter okay that can be helpful too actually and i believe oh yeah i forgot something actually <sighs> at least i think um when you defeat a monster during a combat encounter gain one focus mm. was that deep one attack um of that mystery card a combat encounter or not i think it was because we went through the whole hoops the whole nine yards for that so i think he should have gotten a focus token for that if that's incorrect please let me know because this is most likely the last turn of this episode so yeah i might be able to repair that but i think it was a full-blown combat encounter because again it had the horror check we did go through that combat check of course we used our handcuffs but still we defeated that monster uh, so i think he should be okay he should have received that focus token okay and then we have to go through the event and again that's the end is nigh you've pushed everything to the breaking point your mind body relationships and possessions have all been worn thin by the demands of your quest but you cannot relent not on the brink of disaster each investigator discards one item possession one ally asset one task asset one spell one clue and one focus and one improvement token okay we are losing that focus anyway so but still let me know if that was okay so he's giving that focus right away didn't really help him problem is yeah we will do that now investigator by investigator that's an item it's a tome it's gone that's bad this, this is really a loss uh, we have to get rid of a clue that clue is also gone then we have to get rid of a spell Ugh. this is great but this might be the better one right now so we are getting rid of that arcane insight and i think uh one hell oh that's that definitely is a problem for her she's basically half dead now here not so much that's okay she can live with that but i believe those were all things that you need to lose yes 
for Tony, it's much easier. He simply takes a wound and a sanity hit, and that's pretty much it because he doesn't have any more clues. Of course, yeah, he had that focus token, but I, I gave that focus token away. He doesn't have any more clues, no improvement tokens, no assets whatsoever. So in this case, this was at least okay for him. And that's pretty much for the mythos phase of this round. And originally I was thinking of ending my playthrough, but I think time-wise I'm still okay. And as I didn't really have any impact coming from that focus, so it doesn't matter if he would have gotten it or not, he lost it anyway because of that card, I could consider to go on actually. Yeah, let's do one more round, right? Let's do that. So we will start again with Gloria. So again, we will keep the lead investigator with her. And again, I'm considering to go for a acquire asset action because getting rid of that lavish feast or using it might be really beneficial for her better than a rest action. So I guess let's do that. I think she will for her first action will simply go for a focus. Again, that's never a bad thing. And then she's rolling for that acquire asset. She has an influence of three. She only needs one success. And where are my dice? Where are my dice? Are you kidding me? I have one. I need three. Ah, here they are. <laughs> Under my little slider. Okay, let's see. Okay, these are two successes. Okay, maybe we can now check out some of the others. So we could go for either of those. The Elder Sign, you may reroll one die when resolving the horror check during a combat encounter. Might be cool for her too. If because she might go after this spider at some point in time. But the Lavish Feast ah, is also cool. But we could go for both of those. The Research Student, because again, we could gain one clue. <clears throat> and we are getting rid of two cards. So maybe adding our chances to get something useful. Problem is we still have that Blight condition with Tony. So whatever we give him, it's gone. Unless we really do something terrible to him. Yeah, this game really does hurt. But I still think that this is the better deal. Now let's go with the Lavish Feast and the Research Student. So here we are basically healing her two times for health and two times for her mental stability. I think this really did help her. So this Lavish Feast is gone and the Research Student simply goes with her and she could decide to use him or not. Then let's see dynamite sanctified with dynamite each monster on your space loses three health then this card this card i mean if we would get this one use it immediately before we can lose it i mean that would be insane three health for her if this card would have been there that's so amazing ah okay what do we have here the lock res lodge researcher if you defeat a monster during a combat encounter recover one and gain one clue also very amazing actually a very powerful ally Oof. That's a cool one. But I believe those were her two actions. And again, we are here with Tony. And he could do, he could pull off the very same thing now. Or very similar thing. He cannot use his handcuffs anymore. That's maybe kind of a bummer. Um, but I mean, he still rolls two dice. But he needs that clue. I think that's it, it is a risk staying here. On the other hand, what would we do over here? I mean, right now this thing is there. Yeah, let's let's really stay here. So we are, oh no, he needs two toughness, right? This monster, two toughness. And he's only rolling two dice actually. So we need two successes without any re-rolls. No, I think that's not gonna happen. No, 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 I think. I mean, we can still stay here and do stuff, right? We can still remain here because every time we are moving here, we are losing something. And the Bane condition, the ritual spell here in Buenos Aires doesn't really help him in any way. Because if we might, we don't have to, right? I think we, we can as an encounter may attempt to fend off. So even if we stay here, we could go for a standard encounter and simply wait for another round. So to prep us even more, but again, this two dice, that's really not great. 
No, no. I think it's really time we are moving away here. So we are moving to Buenos Aires. Are we going for a clue or are we going to rest? I think, uh, not clue, a focus action. I think let's go for a focus. And again, let's simply prepare for the next round. Because again, if we are now going for this one here, for the dynamite, for example, it doesn't really help us. Uh, problem is if we move here back, this blight is really bad. I think at some point in time, I have to simply accept the fact that he's not, he has to impair something. And maybe that's again also not the end of the world actually. But I think we don't need to do that right now. Um, we are simply going for a focus action and then yeah, preparing him, him for the next round or so. Okay, let's move into the encounter phase back to Gloria and Arkham. So let's see what we get. And we are at Velma Steiner, it seems. The special at Velma Steiner reinvigorates you. Recover one health. Oh, that's a pity. She doesn't have any hits. Okay. Velma asked you about an occult book that was left as a tip. Law minus one. Okay, we are rolling two dice for her. And I'm following my good friend Paul's advice to use the dice that served us well. And yes, yes, that's success. If you pass, you grasp its Im true importance. Gain one tome unique asset. Okay, wow, that's cool. And here she has found a cryptic text as an action. You attempt to decipher a cryptic message in the text. If you pass, you uncover secrets that could alter the fate of humanity. Flip this card. Okay. Cool stuff. We will keep that for sure and might want to use it. Yeah, everything else. If you fail, no, nope, we have dealt with that card here. So that was an okay encounter, I guess. But then let's see what happens here in Buenos Aires for Tony. A copy of the Necronomicon is kept at the University of Buenos Aires, but the librarian tells you that it's not available for viewing at this time. You try to convince him of the book's importance. So we need an influence check. That's two dice for him. So let's see. Now let's go for the six. And Unless this one is tip. Oh, wow. Okay, that's a hell of a result. If you pass, he relents and allows you a brief look at the book. Gain one ritual spells. Okay, this is not really something which we might consider trading with Gloria at some point in time. But let's see what we get again. I will go from the bottom. What was it? A ritual spell. Incantation. Ritual. Conjuration. As an action, oh, he could use it too. Plus one is not bad. He would roll three dice then. If you pass, you may gain one item or trinket asset from the reserve with value equal to or less than your test result. That's cool because we don't have to do that on an, um city space. Because again, it's not the acquire asset space, which you can only do in a city space. Okay, that might come in handy for him actually. No, that's not bad. That's really not bad. Okay, we have dealt with this event. Uh, encounter phase is over. Yeah, let's move into our next mythos phase. And now everything can be possible. Everything but a rumor. It's another yellow one with tentacles. Oh gosh. I am so through here. The lead investigator loses all but one sanity. If he lost less than five sanity, he impairs. And... I think I actually think the second option here is OK. I think we will lose a lot of sanity now, but we don't have to impair anything. But OK, we have to deal with the omen. We are moving it to the blue. We know we have a blue gate in Tokyo and only one. Yep. Which means doom will advance once more. We will trigger our um, effects. Uh, we are not on any C spaces. Yep which means we don't have to trigger Cthulhu's ability. We still don't have any clues that trigger with a reckoning effect, if I recall that correctly. No, we are okay. So yeah, no, we still have to deal with our rumors up there. This one, I think we can ignore. Yeah, because they both have a Bane condition right now. So I think that's pretty cool, actually. So it's an icy one. That's really one of the simpler ones. And that's really something which you can, if you would like, 
Um, I really shuffle everything together, obviously, and this might end up in a very terrible situation. If you say, I don't want tentacles or only want one tentacle of each color in my deck, for example, you can do these kind of things. So you can really balance things to your liking, that is. But here we have to deal with that. Um, discard one Eldritch token from the card. I think as long as I do have those rumor uh, clue tokens, I think I should use them, actually. It's really very risky because I'm not sure if she will be able to make it up there. I mean, she can do some damage, don't get me wrong, but it's not enough. It's really not enough. No, she will spend her clue just to make sure we are not losing too much. Because again, if this timer is gone, we have lost the game. At some point in time, if whatever Doom advances towards three or two, I could say whatever. I will ignore that at that point in time. And again, we are not bad. I mean, we have solved one mystery. The other mystery is half solved. So I think overall we have made some progress. So not everything is lost yet, but it's still pretty grim, obviously. Then we are doing our possessions and conditions. Again, we will start with a haunted condition for Gloria. And this time she is okay. So we are not taking any more wounds. We have the Blight, which Tony Morgan carries. And I think we can only ever lose item possession. So I could now really decide to get rid of it. But as I don't have an item, I think let's hold on to that. And even later on, we could still say, now I have a very powerful item, which I don't want to lose. So I think, yeah, let's, let's hold on to it. I think that's kind of okay. I believe those were all of the reckonings. I think so. I actually do think so. So we are spawning a gate in Rome. We will draw a monster on the monster bag. And that's a vampire, a vampire. I think vampires are tough. Yeah, exactly. Toughness of three. And overall, if you test, if you fail the horror check, do not resolve. Okay, they have basically. And then if you, if you lose health, they're healing, right? Yeah, it recovers to health. Mm. Yeah, those guys are really brutal. And this is at some point in time a situation that typically happens to me, especially when playing with two investigators only, that the board gets swarmed with monsters. Because I start thinking, ah, come on, this one cultist, hey, this one by Aquila, let's not worry about that. But the more often you say that, the more monsters you will have on the board in the end. So <laughs> something that you might not play as I do. But okay, for now it has to go to Rome. And then, yeah, we are dealing with the event of that card, which is the glimpse or a uh, glimpse the lurker. In one horrifying moment, you saw the true nature of space between worlds. Now your mind stretches, twists and shudders as you struggle to grasp the entirety of existence. The lead investigator loses all but one sanity. So I think this is now the point where we might want to consider changing the lead investigator because she now gets six more horror, bringing her up to seven. Good thing is the second part of this card doesn't trigger if he lost less than five sanity. No, she didn't. So we are okay with this um, mythos card here, but still it was really, really brutal. And then I think it's time to end my playthrough for today. I really hope you enjoyed it so far. Please keep your comments coming and your suggestions coming and remind me of my goofs and things I've forgotten. Really, really do appreciate it. I really need all the help I can get for sure. Also, you shout out as usual to all of my patrons out there. Really also appreciate your support. If you want to support my channel, you will find a link to my page on Patreon. You can join me here on YouTube directly. Like and subscribe. This also greatly helps, of course. And yeah, really hope to see you soon in one of my other videos. And until then, bye-bye.